On October 17, 1995, I, Tanya Clark, was born. In the 16 years since then, there have been many influences and factors in my life that have molded me into the person I am. Some of these influences and factors have changed over time, while others stayed the same, causing parts of me to change and stay the same as well. When I was younger, I was a little princess. I loved dolls, tea parties, and dress-up. Everything a little girl made up of sugar, spice, and everything nice loves. My dream was to become a ballerina when I grew up. I danced for eight years, from the time I was three until I was 11 years old. I refused to wear anything but dresses from preschool until first grade. I never went anywhere without my favorite doll named Dolly, a creative name I know, and was a Disney princess for Halloween three years in a row. But soon, my dad got tired of playing princess tea party with me and introduced me to a toy that I would play with for the next eight years, a soccer ball. I started playing soccer in second grade and I loved it. I danced and played soccer for a while, but eventually I got tired of dance. I guess I finally realized just how itchy those tutus really were. Anyway, I quit and I got more involved in soccer. I traded my dresses for a jersey, my high heels for cleats, and my tee for Gatorade. Pretty soon, I had a permanent shin guard tan. The older I got, the more fun playing became. I played on lots of teams, making great friends on each of them. I learned to value sportsmanship and determination. Soccer taught me that there are bigger things than just me. I play for a team, not just myself. With that came a sense of loyalty I still highly value. Even though my likes and dislikes changed when I became a tomboy, some of them stay the same. For instance, I have always loved to read. I first got into reading when I started the Harry Potter series in first grade. To this day, they're my favorite books. I've reread all of them multiple times, each time better than the last. I am a complete and total bookworm. When I was younger, I would read books by the light of my nightlight when I was supposed to be sleeping. When I was caught, my punishment was having my reading privileges taken away. Ironically enough, I have read books about both princesses and sports and enjoyed them equally. Sure, my taste in books has evolved since first grade. I mean, I don't really read Cam Jansen books anymore, but I still love the same kinds of books, like The Hunger Games. That's why the Harry Potter books have remained my favorites for quite some time. I grew up in New Jersey with a very Indian community. We lived near a lot of my mom's family, all of whom are very Desi or steeped in Indian culture. My mom is 100% Indian, while my dad is Caucasian. We went to a lot of Indian parties, watched Bollywood movies, I took Indian dance lessons, and my nani, or grandmother, would make Indian food every night for us. I was proud to be Indian. I grew up very Desi myself, and in that community, I thought nothing of it. But my parents decided it was a time for a change of pace, and we moved to Great Falls, Virginia. There is not a large Indian community in Great Falls, nor does my mom's extensive family live here. The Indian influences I was so used to were gone when we moved to Virginia. At the time of the move, I thought nothing of this change. But looking back now, I realized how big it was. There were no more Indian parties, dancing, movies, or food. Instead, I assimilated into the new southern community I was in. I took a Tillian, where I learned ballroom dancing and manners and my family joined a country club where my mom plays tennis and I swam on the swim team. Later on, I went to football games and dances. Experiences I'm sure would have been different had I still been living in New Jersey. I never lost the Desi side of me. I just created a new, more American side. Over time, these sides blended me into what I am now. Just like my parents have taken their cultures and created a blended household, that's what I did with myself. My dad comes from a very Irish family. Through him, great Irish traditions for Christmas and Easter have been passed down to my brother and I. My mom's parents are both Indian and immigrated to America when my mom was nine. They brought with them the customs of their homeland, passing them down to my mom. When my parents got married, they refused two very different cultures together to make one that is unique to our family. Through the different communities we have lived in, my parents have maintained a balance of both cultures at home. We celebrate Christmas, Diwali, Easter, and all other important holidays of both cultures. We don't just watch Hollywood movies, we occasionally mix it up with a Bollywood movie. My mom still makes Indian food and we go to church whenever my dad's parents are in town. I was an only child for eight years. It was just me, my mom, and my dad in our house for what seemed to me like a very long time. We were neighbors with my cousins, so I never suffered from only child syndrome. 
but I had always wanted a little brother or sister, and no amount of baby dolls could make up for a real baby. When I was in first grade, we had an assignment to write a letter to Santa telling him what we wanted for Christmas. After considering all the latest Barbies, I decided that all I wanted for Christmas was a real baby. The letters were sent home, and my parents took my wish into consideration. It came a little late, but in August 2003, I got my Christmas present. My brother Dylan was born when I was seven years old. Having a real baby in the house was nothing like having dolls. He cried when he wasn't supposed to, and he actually needed to be fed real food. Unlike my dolls, who were conveniently quiet when I wanted them to be, and whom I only fed when I felt like it. But over time, I saw how great it was to have a sibling. No matter what, I always had someone to play with. I also became much more responsible when Dylan was born. Being a big sister was an important job. I was taking care of someone instead of being taken care of myself for once. I can't imagine what my life would have been like if I didn't have Dylan as a brother. My guess is that it would have been much duller. My cousins who lived next door were like big brothers to me. They teased me and made fun of me, but they were also very protective of me. We were like five peas in a pod. When Dylan was born, it did not just affect me, it affected them too. If anything, we all became closer because of Dylan. We spent hours making drawings for his room and playing with him. He was this great new toy that none of us fought over. Instead, we all played with him equally. To this day, we are all still very close, even though we've all spread out. When we get together, it's as if no time has passed, and we are as close as we were when we were younger.